Good evening, everyone. I'm going to talk a little bit about how I do journeys, what I see, what I experience. And uh, it's one of those things that came up periodically. So I'll start just by saying, I know one of the things that come up is that is it like a dream? Well, my dreams are pretty bloody vivid. They're actually just like super real. So to say that it is like my dreams, sometimes, yeah, sometimes not. Journey isn't simple. It's not as like every journey is as similar, but it's not exactly the same. It's depending on how how deep you go into the trance state. There's times I do journeys and it's extremely vivid, other times that it's not. But the feelings are always there. So it's a combination for me, it's like going into a story. So it would be similar to a very vivid dream. That you go into it and there's a story that unfolds. But I'm submerged into that journey that way. There's also other ways that you can go deeper and deeper into a, a state, a, tra a trance state, but then you start to lose yourself in it. It is much more difficult to control what is happening and what is going on. And to speak, well, well, you might just fall asleep. It's not that simple. So, What I do is I go to a place in my mind with an intention and that intention takes me to its place. So for instance, if I go to a mountain top, I close my eyes and I see everything around me like a real mountain standing on a spot. It could be a place that you went to before or might not be. That's how you start. Or you could just go directly to where you want to go. So if somebody wants you to go take a look at their atmosphere, you go to this. You go to their atmosphere. I'd like to spin there initially, or just walk through a doorway to get there. And when I go there, I allow the images to come to you. So if there's a butterfly, and a flower, walk up to the flower. You can even like, touch the butterfly, touch the flower, even pick the flower if you choose to. Follow your heart, it'll tell you what to do. And allow the images to flow. The scenes can change instantaneously or they continue to. But you don't control the images that are coming in. You allow them to throw, flow through your mind and interact with them. But not everybody does journeys the same. A lot of people feel everything and the feeling gives them an understanding of what is going on. The image is, the, is the feelings are so strong that they create images in their mind, an understanding of what is happening. But for myself, I'm walking through a movie, a dream, you could say. And everything that happens, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm going to see next. I don't know what I'm going to see through the next doorway. Things happen unexpectedly. But your spirit reacts and you allow it to do what it wants. Because it knows so much more than you do. Everything's based by thought and intention, but when you're doing a journey, your thought and intention is not what you allow to happen. The intention is there when you want to go somewhere. So if I want to heal somebody, I go to this place where they want to heal. If a person has passed away and they want me to go see them, I'll, my intention is to go see the person that they want me to go see. And that's where I end up going to. From there, you allow the images to flow into your mind and allow or flow into your heart would be a better way of putting it. And you just walk through the image. 
you walk through and you interact with it. The scenes can be horrible or beautiful, depending on what the energy it is that the person is has going on at the time. As well, the images themselves are representation of what that individual is going through at that time. So they might be horrific, but it doesn't mean that it's actually technically happening exactly the way the images say. However, that is how I'm interpreting the energy and the feelings around that energy or seeps into your physical atmosphere, which then could create physical problems. It could create sickness, it can create anxiety, it can create sadness, happiness, so many different things. It could be you'd have images of suicide in your mind and it comes from your spiritual atmosphere and you go there and you're, you're killing yourself repeatedly in your spirits or a part of yourself is killing you like deep down inside over and over again. It doesn't mean you're going to kill yourself, but what it does is create, it can create sadness, it can create anxiety, it can create images in your mind. So journeying is very complex because it's intention that creates where you want to go or what you want to do. So what limit does it have? Really none in a way of where you can go and what you can do. We limit ourselves a lot of the times. So when you go to a place, for instance, if I journey to do healing on somebody, I have the intention in my mind that I want to heal that thing. and I heal that part of them that it could be represented in so many different ways. So if somebody wants to know what is creating their anxiety, so what you do is you have that intention and you go to there and then a story starts to unfold. And as you come across negative things, you transform them, which then creates the healing within the person. Sometimes you come across very powerful entities, in some cases even old demons, they themselves can be transformed. And when they become transformed, it's up to the individual to let them go. You'd be surprised how many people don't want to let go of the negative entities and negative demons. they'll just all call them right back into their heart again after the healing is done. Those individuals aren't ready to let go, which is their choice. I'm not saying it's wrong. However, just be very aware that when you do healing for somebody, you have to also work on it yourself. You can't expect somebody to take away everything and you do nothing. Because then, if you do nothing, the thing that you heal will just all of a sudden come back again. But the healing that, that I do allows an individual, allows the person to have freedom long enough so they can let go of it. And the things that have caused that anxiety will be temporarily relieved. As long as you don't pull it all back inside yourself, you can walk away from it. That is hard for human beings to do, to be able to just walk away from the problems without much difficulty. Because we have the problems, we're used to them. It's like when you have something that annoys you, for instance, you could have somebody, a friend, and they do something that's annoying. But then they go away and it's like you miss that one thing, that annoying thing that you used to do. You miss it because it becomes normal for you. It becomes like a routine. So you have to be willing to let go of the routine in order to heal. So it's a collaboration of working together 
That's why the journey is so important because the journey tells you what you need to do to let go, what you need to do to heal. And the message and in, in the, in the imagery that you're seeing is what's going on and how it's being interpreted. And sometimes you heal really old wounds. But those old wounds are the, are the roots of the problem. So when you heal those, the other structure starts to fall apart. And the more you get into the journey, the more detailed things become. The more lost you get into the journey the more details things become. So you never really want to get lost. I don't think you could truly ever get lost, could you, in a journey? Some people have. Journeying isn't for the faint of heart. It takes time to develop your skills. And mostly you cannot have the fear within your heart because if you have fear within your heart, then you're going to just have all kinds of things that you attach to yourself. See, nothing can attach to you unless you believe it can. So fear is something you need to have control over before you do journeys. It's not that it's nothing to be afraid of. The problem is, is that you attach things to yourself because you're afraid. If you're not afraid, nothing attaches to you. Simple. It's a really complex subject and so many different things you could talk about. And it's a lot of times you start talking and your start, mind starts going in a million directions at once. What do you talk about first? Let's do a little guided tour here. I'm going to do a journey and I'm going to describe each step along the way and how I do it. And the things I do and feel, I'm immersed into the environment. I am actually in that environment, 360 degrees, immersed into it. So I can turn around, I can go left and right, straight ahead. I'm in it. It's like being in a VR environment, virtual reality is a good way to describe it. That's kind of how I see things when I do a journey. So when I speak the words, I'm speaking either they're speaking directly to me and I'm relaying what they're saying or, and or I'm actually describing what they look like, what their environment looks like, what is going on, what I'm doing. But ultimately, if I didn't, if I could just plug my head into it, it'd be like watching a movie with actors, because they, all these spirits that you come across talk to you, or you talk to them. It's really cool, actually, and beautiful at the same time, but also very disturbing if you're not prepared for it. That's so why I always say it's not for the faint of heart. But if you have no fear, then there's nothing to be afraid of. And when you are afraid, it's you that creates your problems, not the spirits that you're involved with. So stop blaming other people and other things. So I'm just gonna, I am standing a lot of the times, oh, well, I don't do it as much as I used to because I am automatically ground myself all the time. But you can visualize yourself to have roots going from your legs into the ground. And then you can visualize light coming from the heavens into your head. And light coming, you pull energy from the roots into your body from the earth. And then you allow it to flow into your heart. And then you expand the light all around you. And now you're ready to go. I personally spin and explode in a bright light. I spread my wings out really far. I got very large wings. And then I spin to the intention of where I want to go. 
I'm just going to take you on a secondary journey first, a place that you go to help with your visualization. So I'm going to go to the top of a mountain. I'm spinning and it could be the spring, summer, fall, winter, it's up to you. I'm going to go I'm going to go in the winter because it's winter time. I spin, I appear. So as I spin, I spin and there's a point where it just feels like I need to explode or, or just end up becoming that place. So I spin and then I appear in that place. And you can appear in that place in a burst of sound, light, whatever you want to or just be absolutely silent. So I peer down and land onto the ground. I'm walking along the mountain top. The wind is on my face and I can feel the wind. I can feel the Christmas in the air. I can smell the air. When I breathe, my nostrils freeze. I can feel the wind and the snow on my face or it could be a sunny day. It could be at night time. So whatever you want it to be, let's stay in the daytime in a clear day for now with the fair weather clouds and blue sky and the snow glistening like crystals from the reflection of the sun. Take your hands and dip them in the snow, bare hands. Feel the coldness and wetness of the snow the texture, smell the Christmas of the air, throw the snow into the air and watch it, little pieces of ice crystals falling down in your face or flakes of snow. Make a snowball and throw it as far as you can. Make another one. Do that until night falls. Then watch the moon rise. Look at the stars. There's a shooting star that appears and slams into the mountain top far away, creating an explosion. Visualize that. Feel the energy. It causes this tremor where you're standing. Now allow yourself. I'm going to take you into space. So now from the top of the mountain, just wave your hand and walk into space. Or you can spin and appear into space. Same way you've got here, it doesn't matter. So you open the door and you walk through it and this, you're in outer space. Well, now we're just sitting in a, basically a void of darkness and stars. I want you to start moving really fast there's a comet that goes by, grab onto the comet and ride it. You're huge. You're big enough that it just, it's like riding on it like a horse. And just ride through the stars, just going at the speed of, of the comet. You can go faster. Uh, take control of the comet and be like going into warp speed. And have the light turn into lines all around you and you can stop and it could be a beautiful nebula and you're in the middle of it. You can go to a sun and watch the explosion inferno all around you. You can walk into the sun, feel the heat and feel, let it burn away anything that doesn't need to be there anymore. Nothing can hurt you here. Only if you believe it can. Now appear walking down a forest. Just phase out and, re and reappear into a forest of one tall trees, tall oaks, maples, chestnut trees, poplar trees. It's in the fall and the leaves are falling. You're trying to catch one of the leaves if it gets close enough. 
Or you could try chasing them down. It's up to you. Then you come into an opening in the forest and there's a massive tree, four or five hundred feet tall. And a man is standing there looking at you. Walk up to the man. Everything that you see, I will leave up to you. The man is what? What do you see it as? Is it an old man, a young man, a child? Is it an angel? Is it Jesus? Is it God? How does it appear to you? He takes you by the hand and you walk through the doorway. When you walk through the doorway, what do you see? You're walking into a big old tree, but you could be just allow the light and allow the images to flow into your mind. What do you see? Allow the images to penetrate. What do you see? Nothing is wrong or right. As I describe what I see, it's going to interfere with you what you see. Or is it? That is up to you. I walk in into an area where there's people cooking on the right in the kitchen and I hear a whistle blowing and I sit down at the table. I'm surrounded by people and they're having a deep conversation and somebody comes over with a cup of tea and they place it in front of me. I thank them and they smile at me and the spirits are all around me. They raise the cups in the air and they take a drink of tea. One stands up and looks right at me and says, why am I here? I said I am here because others are wondering how I do journeys. So they're walking with me through this journey. But they also need to understand that everybody does it their own way and it needs to be done their own way. That is okay as well. I'm going to leave it here because it could go really long. The question is, why are you there in that table? They're asking you that question. So that's just part of a little things of sort of how the journey state goes. And what do I see? How do you heal? You heal with the intention of where you, what you want to heal and you're taken to that space and you transform and heal the things that you see and come across. You go back and you change history so that never comes and the best way to heal is when it heals voluntarily, when you don't force the healing. There's so many ways of doing this and it all depends on what spirit shows you, what spirit shows you. But the thing is you have to understand is that when you do the healing, you allow your spirit to do the healing. You allow the energies to flow through you or you get other people to help you out. But the key here is allowing things to flow because as soon as you start to get your own mind involved, things fall apart at times, things will come to a screeching halt. You will be surprised, you'll be amazed, and you'll feel love and levels that you never thought possible.
Well, you're also be showing things about yourself that you have to accept and move on to heal. And when it comes to healing yourself, a lot of the times it's accepting what it is and forgiving yourself. So I'm going to share today. Thank you very much, everyone. And if you wish to do a journey healing with me, you can visit my website at www.almondrossawakening.com and you can go to my other website, which is Northern Lights at www.josephbradleyroars.com. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a great evening.